All right. You're listening to 91.5 WUML Lowell Blues Deluxe. And I have the distinct pleasure of having Mr. Brian Templeton, Kid Ramos, and Johnny Ramos on with me three today. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Good. Hey. You Brian, doing? I don't I don't know if you know, but I won the KBA this year, 2023. Oh, nice. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. It was fun going to Memphis and hanging out on Beale Street and doing all the things that you do during uh, the IBC. So it was fun. It was a that, fun, fun day. A uh, couple days, actually. There you go. Did you get some barbecue and a bowl of red beans and rice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We went. I, uh, one of the record labels I deal with, uh, Echo Records, who's actually in the, the old, one of the old Stax uh, buildings. Cool. He, he, he took me over and we had, we had some uh, great barbecue in, in Memphis. It was, it was a really good day. Beautiful, man. Yeah, Take in the whole experience. It's yeah. good. So tell me about the, the Willie Campbell record, you guys. Go ahead, kid. Well, it was, you know, obviously a, a labor of love. I mean, Willie and I go back over 40 years of playing together, starting in the James Harmon band in the early 80s. And then, uh, of course, the Fabulous Thunderbirds, the Manish Boys. We played with Lester Butler on some stuff that never has been released. And, uh, of course, the Proven Ones. And uh, so there's a lot of history there with Willie. And Willie got diagnosed with uh, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And... Um, was I believe misdiagnosed for a long time before they finally figured out what it was because he he didn't live very long after the diagnosis and but he told Brian and myself he said I got one more record in me and he did he stepped up and did it man like a champ that he was you know and and he was you know it was very emotional time we went and recorded at Dockside Studios in Louisiana which was we all got to live together there we stayed there in the the barn or in the pool house and had our meals together and made this record. All the friends came in, Anson, Mike Morgan, Sean Pittman, Jimmy Wood. Wow. Uh, it Sugar, was Ray. Sugar Ray Rayford. Um, plus the core band, you know, the proven ones, Jimmy bought Brooks Millgate and Brian, and myself, my son, Johnny was there as well. And then we also had Davey Thalgo and Kim Wilson and, uh, Janova Magnus, Jason Ritchie, Joe Lewis Walker, Wow, Sax Beetle. Yeah. Um, who else? I mean, there's a Incredi few. Incredible amount of great musicians on that record. Who's it? Awesome. Yeah, Anson, Anson Funderburg. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and all of them, all of them just just said, yeah, just let, just tell us what you want us to do. And, and they, you know, it, they just would, they did it for free. It was all for Willie. Uh, and this is a uh, this is you know this record is is his legacy and we're we're proud to have been on it and Kid and I and Willie all co-produced it. Um, so yeah, it's an amazing record. We just had a listening party uh, on Tuesday night. It was a thing through Bandcamp where they played the whole record, and we could we were chatting along with fans and telling them about the the experiences and what some of the songs where they came from. And it was just, it was so great, you know, just everybody just remembering Willie and uh, listening to the record at the same time. And it was the first time I had listened to the record from the beginning to end in a while. And uh, I was just blown away by how great a record it is. You know, I know I'm biased because I'm on it, but I think everybody will agree if you listen to this song, I mean, it's got 14 tracks. 15. So, is it 15? Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of music there. All the all the tracks are different it's not all blues it's all blues bass but um yeah i mean if we can stress anything through this interview it would be to please pick up a copy of that record because um you know all the money goes to his family have and you heard it yet i haven't heard it yet no okay so i'm hoping i are you on a list do you get uh, releases from blue heart some some do uh, some I do some I don't but I I can go I can I can reach out to them, yeah or I can I can reach out to them as well I've been texting with them every day so, um, so yeah it's called be cool right, yeah, yeah but I mean I think we need to get you a copy of it before Saturday so 
I'll I'm get gonna... I'll get one. I can go online and get it. I can go to Amazon and pull it down. Okay, well, it's up to you. Yeah. So yeah, we, go we ahead. You, definitely, it's uh, it's uh, like Brian said. I think it's a great record. I, not because I'm on it. Again, I could step away from it and say, look at all these people that are on it. It's great. Uh, without, I don't care if I'm on it or you know, it doesn't. It's regardless. It just stands on its own. It's it's amazing record, really. I bet it is. If all you guys are part of it, I bet it's a great record. So you guys got some gigs coming. You want to talk about those? Well, I think the only one that we can talk about is on Sunday <laughs> because they'll, by the time they hear this interview, it'll be too late for tonight's gig, right? Yep. Yeah. So what time do you air again? Is it 12? Three, to three o'clock, three to six on Saturday. Okay. So there's two gigs we can talk about. Um, Saturday night at eight, we're playing as a part of this thing called Rock the Lawn, which is out in Monson, Mass, which is, uh, you know, I think it's out near Worcester. Uh, I'm from Massachusetts, but I never heard, I never heard of Monson. <laughs> but it's out there and we're playing there on Saturday night. We go on at eight. Um, and then on Sunday, we're down at the, um, the, the Marshfield Fair Blues Festival. That's great. John Hall, he's a great guy. It's a great lineup. A whole bunch of really good people on there. And uh, I think Laura Chavez is on just before us. And she's from down my neck of the woods, a little bit further south in San Diego. But yeah, it's it's a great lineup. The Delgado brothers are on the night before. It, it's it's going to be a good time. Yeah, it always is. He's He puts on great festivals every year. Very cool. That's awesome. So... The proven ones. I, I want to ask you about that. Is that over, or are you gonna guys gonna continue without Willie? I don't see how we can. I mean, you know, Willie was definitely the heart of that band, and I'm and I'm not talking about just his playing. I just mean in general. Um, you know, when you got a band full of people, there's always different things going on in different directions. And I, I kind of look at Willie, and maybe kid, you can agree. Uh, Willie was the middle. You know, he was kind of the guy that. Yeah kept it all together for us. He just had a good attitude. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason. Kid and I are certainly going to play together. Um, if we have the opportunity to play again with Jimmy and Brooks, we definitely will. But um, as far as calling it the proven ones, I doubt we would do it. I'm not, I, I guess we wouldn't just say no, absolutely no, but there's no plans to do it without Willie. I, I just don't see why we should. We can, we can play together without using that name. Absolutely. I agree with Brian. I mean, Willie was like the glue that held everything together. Willie just had his spirit, the, the spirit about him. And he just, he just was easy to get along with and everybody got along with him and he just kind of made everybody feel, you know, part of something. And that that's gone, you know, kind of with Willie not there. Not, not that we have any issues with amongst us, but you know, to give of, you a good idea, the way that the proven one started was that, um, Kid Jimmy, Anthony Jirasi, and um, Willie were all playing together in the Manish Boys and with Sugar Ray Rayford. And they had decided they kind of wanted to do their own thing. And Sugar was supposed to originally be the singer of the band. It wasn't called The Proven Ones at that point, but whatever band it was going to be. And so those guys all recorded all the music for that first record, Wild Again. Um, at Jimmy's studio in Portland, Oregon, and Sugar Ray blew up. I mean, he just got super busy and just wasn't able to be a part of that project. And so they were looking for other singers, and I ended up getting that gig. But the way I got it was, since the record was already recorded, I flew out to Jimmy's. Well, I sent out a, a recording of me that I had just did hear with the, one of the tracks that they had, and they all said, hey, he sounds good, let's let's use him. I flew out to Portland, and I recorded all the songs in a couple of days vocally, and that was in December of 2018. Wow. wow. In July, July 4th, 2019, was the first gig for that band, and it was the first time that I ever sang with these guys. So the first time that I ever got on, I was I was part of the band and on their recording before I ever actually even met them. 
and went on stage in front of like 40,000 people and played with these guys who were all my heroes, you know, you, I could, you know, being called up to the majors, you know what I mean? And um, I was so nervous. I could be, I was just like, I was terrified. And it was Willie who could sense that. And he pulled me aside and he said, you know, you're, you're in, you're, you're right where you're supposed to be is what he said. Yeah. You're right where you're supposed to be. And of course I went out there and after like, you know, one bar, <laughs> it was, it was gone. And then, you know, I mean, there's, there's some footage online from that waterfront blues festival, which is the first gig the proven ones ever did. And, you know, we, we killed it. Yeah. We killed it. It, it was just, it was just such a fun part to be a part of that. So that's the kind of guy Willie was. Yeah, yeah. not too long after that, COVID hit. Yeah, after, right after the second record came out, literally the minute it came out. And I think Brian's being modest because when we heard Brian sing on the track that, that, he, that he sent us, everybody was like blown away by Brian. And we go, this is the guy. This is the guy for this band. And like he said, you know, we didn't even, hadn't even met him yet. So we, we all flew out to Jimmy's place in Oregon and we met, I think we had one, one meal together. We sat at the table at Jimmy's house and we ate dinner. And the next day we're playing in front of thousands of people. And Brian was just like, we're, everybody was blown away by Brian. So it was a perfect fit, you know, it was meant to be. And uh, then the second record we did at Dockside, the same place we did the, this Willie record, Be Cool. And uh, it, it just was a great experience. The second record was unbelievable. And then COVID hit and yeah, that was that. So to say we've had some unfortunate set of circumstances follow us after the second record is no, is really an understatement because we put that out, COVID hit, then Willie gets diagnosed in what, March, April of- Yeah, and you got really sick. I got really sick. I spent 36 days in the hospital last year and- and COVID kind of broke up the band a bit. There was kind of some weirdness going on with that whole COVID thing. And, uh, you know, it was just a weird time. But, you know, Kid and I are both Christians. We both uh, we both subscribe to the thought that everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So, I mean, Absolutely. for good or for bad. Absolutely. You know, but we two really good records came out of that. Well, actually three, including yeah. Willie's. Yeah. You know? So, you know, it is what it is. You know, we can listen to the music and move forward. So what do you see in the future for the, for you two guys, anything, any other collaborations going to happen? Do you know coming up on the books, but absolutely some stuff will happen. Um, I think, you know, we start, I, I flew out to, to his area in June and did some shows with him to great success. People absolutely. loved it. Absolutely. So it's just a matter of, of setting up some dates out there and like, well, he can he comes out here like this weekend. And then at that point, you know, we can, we, we already talked about maybe doing another record in the future. And, you know, we, we know we can play in Europe. If, you know, it's just a matter of, um, you know, Kid and I are both not in the position anymore where we're kind of interested in like, you know, hopping in the van for three weeks and driving <laughs> around the country, which it's just not conducive. I mean, he works. Yeah. I have my farm here. Uh, we have our families, um, so we're willing to do whatever it is uh, to a point, you know. But you know, even even us making a record in the future is like it'll be a lot of fun. But we were just talking last night about how the industry has changed, and yeah. if you're a blues band and you're not willing to get in the van and drive around the country, there's really no way to sell records anymore. To blues fans you know you can you can promote it a little bit online when it first comes out but there's just so many choices and you know people can go right on and like say spotify and listen to the record for basically free you know yeah. so you know maybe record an ep or some singles to just put out on on digitally or whatever uh, it, it all depends but you know kid and i are both we like playing live, you know, I mean, it's fun to record and we love to record, but at least I'll speak for myself. I get all my energy and spirituality out of playing in front of people. You know, that was why during COVID I had a few offers from people 
to do stuff online, you know, it's like uh, Zoom Zoom concerts, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I said, uh, I don't want to do it. I I can't like perform to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't get that feeling, you know, so I, I declined that. And that was and that was one of the reasons why um, uh, by the time your audience listens to this, the we will have just be getting off stage. But um, I do a thing in my at my farm here where we're going to be playing on a flatbed truck and um, people come in, they drive their trucks in, they pull out their grills um it's free admission we pass around a bucket for donations and everybody has a great time but that started because of covid the summer of 2020 nobody had any opportunity to see live music at all so i said let's do it you know and you do it every year you've done it every year since at least one but usually more than one so um, and wh when are the ones this year well that is, is like i said as your audience is listening to this show we will be just getting on stage at the farm so they, they won't be able to we'll be doing it on saturday yeah you know? yep um but um you know it's all over facebook and everything so there'll be quite a few people here somebody will live stream it probably good it'll be fun if if they live stream it i may even jump on it and play it, play a little bit of it. We'll see. Yeah. Hey, modern technology. Who knows? You, you never know <laughs> these days. Yeah. You could be in a different room in a different state, you know, and somebody could tune in, you know, so. So Brian, you got a lot of other things going on with, you know, you got the Delta generators and the Knickerbocker all stars. You want to talk about the 50th anniversary of the, Delta generators. I'm going to ask you a question before you answer that. How did you get into the Delta generators? I never asked that question. Uh, I so it's fifteenth. Fifteenth, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you're already figured it out. There's no way we could have been together for fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I just got that gig because Craig Rodding, the singer of the band on their first four records, and the you know one of the founding members of the band. Um, decided he needed to do different things and they found themselves without a singer. I, I didn't really know any of those guys, but I was a fan. Um, they were one of the bands that I really loved from this area uh, because I could tell by their records that they're, they, they like to write and play songs. And I'm a big fan of songs. I like it. I like, you know, my things to tell a story and you, you get in and you get out and you get on to the next one. And so um, I really felt like they were really great songwriters. And so uh, that, that's it. Charlie called me up and asked me if I'd be interested in doing a couple shows. Um, and I did. And then, you know. That was it. That was it. I mean, they never actually officially asked me to join the band. But, <laughs> yeah. but I've been with them now for like six years or so. So I guess I got the job. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's... Um, so this is the uh, the 15th year for the band. So I've been with them for about six years, I think. And so what we decided to do was we're going to do a show at Off the Rails in Worcester on the 29th of September. And we actually invited Craig to come and do it. So both Craig and I will be on that show. So he'll do some of the earlier stuff. I'll do some of the later stuff and we'll do some stuff together. So it's a very special show. It'll only be the second time I ever met Craig. Wow. So, um, but I'm a big fan of his vocals and his his lyrics. I, I love singing his lyrics. He's a really good songwriter. So it's going to be really a lot of fun to do that. Yeah, and you get to tell him how much you like his lyrics when you see him. Yeah. And the generators have another gig I'd like to I'd like to plug uh, yeah. coming up for that uh, September second. We're doing a show down at this place called Soundcheck Studios in Pembroke as a, on a double bill with a with a group called A Band of Killers <laughs> with uh, Tim Guerin and Johnny Trauma. Wow, so, Tim Guerin. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, well, he's still, man, he, Tim Guerin doesn't stop, man. He's, he's a songwriting machine and a guitar playing monster, and he's always doing things. Um, so they're, you know, 
that's kind of a fun show for us because if you listen to the generators music and especially the stuff that we recorded recently, we're not really playing a whole lot of blues, you know, it's blues based rock pop. That's mm -hmm. got a heart to it, you know? And so this is a show that's not going to be the typical kind of blues show. So we're kind of uh, going to enjoy that. I think just to get out and do a different kind of thing. So that's September 2nd at, uh, at Soundcheck in Pembroke. And then the Knickerbocker All-Stars. Knickerbocker All-Stars, yeah, put together by this guy, J.P. Shearer. Um, it's a big band. I really love playing in it because I get a chance to do material that I never get a chance to do. To play in a band with four horns, with arrangements. Cool. And to be able to do things like, you know, uh, you know, Ain't That Loving You by Bobby Bland and, um, you know, a lot of swing stuff and a lot of like New Orleans based like Smiley Lewis. Wow, and that's cool. so to be able to do that type of material, you know, I mean, I could never I've been playing now for 30 years and I to this day, I still can't afford to hire any horns. <laughs> <laughs> You just it's just too many mouths to feed on what you know you know it's funny i started singing in in at the end of 1989 was my first gig i got a hundred dollars for that show and it's uh it hasn't really changed <laughs> <laughs> you know it's still kind of that money you know i'm trying to you know you try to get more but i mean the way that the people think is like oh you know hire a four, four piece band for my club uh, i can give you 400 you know and it just it seems like live music is the only you know genre that hasn't gone you know no cost of living raise for yeah. musicians <laughs> but anyway um so yeah it's just a, it's a wonderful thing to be to be involved in that project and yeah we're actually playing september 2nd at the Rhythm and Roots Festival down in Rhode Island. So Nina I'll be Grat, pop yep. popping off stage there and heading straight to Soundcheck and doing a gig that night. Wow. And the horns in that band, some of those guys are from Roomful. Uh, Rich Latai is the only one um, the, who's the permanent member. Cause we, sometimes we have to swap out those guys. Rich Latai, is not only a founding member of Roomful, but is still in Roomful. Yep. Uh, Doug James, uh, who is also, um, wasn't one of the first guys in, but was a long, long time member and the main Barry player for Roomful. He's the first call on that, but he doesn't, isn't always able to make that gig. So we might end up having other guys, but- He's with Jimmy Vaughn too. Yeah, yeah, so. And he's a character and a half. Yeah, he? <laughs> yeah, he is. So, yeah. Well, that's great. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to go back historically in your career. The Radio Kings, remember them? Yeah, I have a slight memory of that, although that's, that was a hazy time in my life and in my head. <laughs> well, I have some recordings of you guys when you came into the studio way back. Oh, well, I definitely remember that. I remember coming in. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And not too long I, after that, you, you guys potted ways. It was a little after that, I think. I'd, like, I'd love to hear that stuff if you can get it on a disc for me or something. Yeah, I can. I have it. Yeah, Mike decided, he, Mike Danello, he decided he wanted to do something different. And um, we potted ways at the end of 99. So we were together from 91 to 99. And... Pretty much all of 92, we were Jerry Portnoy's backing band. And then we kind of reformed in 93 and went on until 99, put out a couple records. And then we actually put another record out later on in, 20, uh, I think it was 2009, we put out another record that nobody heard. But um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a pretty, pretty crazy time for me back in those days. I was kind of, the world was my oyster. Yeah. Well. <laughs> From what I remember, you had a following in Europe. You could go back. It didn't matter if the Radio Kings were with you. You, you could go back to Europe and perform if you wanted to. Am I right? Yeah, and I still, I still can. And I actually went there and had a nice, very successful little tour in May and did a couple of good-sized festivals. And, you know, 
you know, I had to, I had to add some shows uh, that didn't really pay well to, you know, but they, you know, you, you got to fill in those blanks. You know, it's not like it used to be in Europe or anywhere, you know, I mean, they don't, they don't really do it the way they used to in Europe because they just can't, the economy is too messed up and they can't really afford to pay bands to, you know, cause you gotta, you gotta pay hotels and flights and all that stuff. So, yeah. you know, what I did was I booked three good paying festivals and then with that money, I was able to pay my expenses and have a little left over and then pepper pepper it up with gigs that paid you know so you know we all made a little bit of money and um and had some good shows and the idea would be to kind of you know start rebuilding my name over there if, if i want to so we'll you, see you can I, you were still i remember right after the radio kings that well, was quite a while after that you were telling me on a, we did an interview you were telling me that they still know me over there and I'm still able to get, get over there and make some money. I'm going to continue to do it. And you are. Yeah. That's great. And I was, I was able to tour over there with Sonny Rhodes from Texas. Yeah. And also with Otis Grand, who we recently lost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Otis uh, heard me sing at the house of blues back in the nineties. And then he called me up out of the blue in like, I think it was 2002. And I, I went out and did a bunch of tours with him. So that also helped with keeping my name going. And I had a really good agent, Tano Rowe, in Italy. And he brought me over for quite a few tours and actually made a record, a double live record that is currently unavailable, I think. <laughs> but, um, well, yeah, I mean. Would I like to I, hear that? If, if, if there's any record of it, we can get a copy of it. That would be great. Yeah, I, I guess I could try to contact him. Um, I don't even have a copy of it, but yeah, it's a double live record with a guitar player from Italy named Enrico Crivellaro. I know so, him. Yeah, he's he's he plays guitar on it. It's a good record, you know. Yeah. So um, I, I'll do my best to see if I can track one down for you, John. Um, I'm going to get you the the recording from the radio station I have when you yeah, guys came. What year was that? Was that like around 97, 96, 97, somewhere in there? Wow. Maybe I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Why? You got you did acoustic stuff when you came in. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. You know, I'm just, I'm one of those guys that just like I can't listen to myself objectively. <laughs> you know, I'm always just think, listening to what I did wrong instead of listening to what I did right. You know. Well, you're doing everything right. I mean, you got all these great recordings. You're, you're involved with multiple different projects. I mean, how many other guys can say they're doing that? Not many. Yeah, well, I, I, I give all credit to God. It's all blessings. Yeah, you know, you, know, you and Kid are working together. That came from all the, you know, all the things that you, you started to do with Willie and, 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 uh, kid. And now you and kid are doing things together. I mean, it, it, it networking is the biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And I have Anthony Jirasi to thank for that. He's the one who threw my name into the ring. See, and he's known it all, all over the world. Yeah. I think he's in Edmonton this weekend. Is he? Yeah. I, I, we did that festival in 2019 and I, and I, I saw that he's up there. He's doing a, I think they're calling it Pianorama with, uh, uh, you know, Veronica Lewis. Yep. Yeah, her star is rising big. So I think it's the two of them and another good piano player I didn't recognize, but they're doing like a three piano thing. Yep. So. Yeah, she knows uh, Marsha Ball very well. Marsha and her best buddies. Yeah, well, that's a good mentor to have for, yeah. a, p for a female piano player. <laughs> and she lives here in Haverhill, Mass., where I live. Yeah, yeah. We I saw her. We were on a festival together uh, just after COVID when they started opening things back up at that Blues on the Range. Uh, yep. the Marty's. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the first gigs the Generators did once things started to open back up again. So that must have been right around, tw I guess that was August 2022. Yep. Maybe 20, no, maybe 21. Yeah, things maybe started opening up then. I don't know. I can't remember. I choose to try to forget those years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. 
It was a crazy time, those two and a half years, almost three years, I'll tell you. Especially for musicians. It wasn't it wasn't a good time. Yeah, well, once again, everything happens for a reason. What the reason is, I don't know. So well, I'm these gonna... these interviews that I'm doing audio and video never happened before COVID. It was COVID that got me started to do these this way. Yeah. And it's great. I can do them all over the world with no problem. Very cool. So again, I just want to give both of you uh, congratulations on the new record and look forward to hearing all the new music when you guys decide what you want to do. And thank you for taking some time out of your busy day to spend it with us. Well, really appreciate it, John. Thank and you. We you yeah. know, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug the record. It's called "Be Cool." Willie J. Campbell, Be Cool. On uh, Blue Heart Records. Blue Heart Records. You can get it right from their site. Or if you're coming out to Monson or down to Marshfield, we'll have plenty of copies. So, um, great. Yeah. And we'll have to get you guys into the studio, play live on my show one of these days. Yeah, I mean, even if it's just me and Charlie, we can pull it off. Whatever you want to do, you just let me know and we'll get it set up. All right, Sean. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Kid, Johnny, have a good day. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you. All right. Nice talking to you. you All righty. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.